Hello, everyone, and welcome back to The Legend of Dragoon right here on Missledyne Online. What's up? That's me. That's my channel. I'm so glad that you guys uh, found another Legend of Dragoon video. Thank you so much for clicking on it. And hey, a special thank you uh, to those that are watching during the premiere of the episode, uh, which is every Monday, Wednesday, Friday at 2 p.m. Eastern. Uh, really appreciate you guys hanging out in the chat. It's It's been a lot of fun talking to you guys, so thank you very much. Anyways, in the last episode of The Legend of Dragoon, we reunited with our friends here in Fueno, which is where we currently are, uh, because I need to make some room in my inventory. So we are about to enter a place uh, that we will never have access to ever again, uh, and that is called Prison Island. We have to go through the undersea cavern to get to Prison Island, and there are a ton of items that are uh, kind of missable. Uh, and we want to make sure that we have room to actually buy those. And of course, this is a wonderful, wonderful time, your last opportunity really, to stock up on burnouts and gushing magmas that you might need for the upcoming boss fight slash area. All right, we're stocked up. We're ready to go. Let's leave Fueno and finally head to the Undersea Cavern. Also, you can use this time to make sure that you're restored, that you don't have any afflictions going on or anything like that. Uh, and there is an enemy that I actually want to show you guys. Uh, and hopefully we can run into it. It is a another unique monster. All right, finally, we have found the... Guys, that took over 45 minutes of searching. But this is the unique monster that I want to show you guys. This, my friends, is the treasure jar, which is one of the most annoying enemies. Uh, random... Uh, one of the most annoying, unique monsters that we can find. Uh, I'm actually going to use a sachet on it right away to kill it. Uh, you know what? Actually, I've decided not to. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to use a magic sig stone on the treasure jar. This thing is immune to physical damage, so you have to use magic attacks to defeat it, which is actually super, super annoying. But what we're going to do is uh, we... So we use the magic sig stone. We're going to use uh, speed up on whoever's our fastest, which might actually be dart right now. All right, and then get this team. Uh, I'm going to use a special so that it's got five health as well, which is super annoying. But we're going to use we're going to use a special here so that we get all three into dragoons and they can use their dragoon magic to try to do this. Now, you can also use attack items, uh, but uh, we need those. And I don't really want to use them on this. You could also use a sachet just to kill it immediately. Uh, we are going to go into all three dragoons because it's not a problem. Uh, we can, there's an inn right here. We can rest. It's, it's not a big deal. And we're going to use just the base, uh, the base magic that all of these dragoons have to try to kill this. Here's the thing though. The treasure jar does not give experience and it does not give golds, but it does give a ruby ring, which you can sell for a pretty respectable amount of golds. All right, it's used its final Sig Stone. Two more attacks and the treasure jar will die. Let's see if I can actually get credit for it. All right, we did it. Treasure jar is defeated, which is, I, 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 you know, that's cool. Uh, that is an annoying enemy. There's also another trick you can do. Oh, there we go. We got the ruby ring, which is the only thing you can get from the treasure jar unique monster. Another thing that you can do is when you start the battle, you immediately transform that character into a dragoon. You use the magic attack, and then the if if it puts up a magical barrier, then the next character will use a magic six stone. If it doesn't, then that second character will also turn into a dragoon, and it will uh, use a magic attack then. And then finally, the third character will just use the magic six stone. And that strategy should work if it doesn't run away in the first two turns, which it typically doesn't. So you actually will get pretty good. I'm going to go back to the inn to rest, and then I'll see you in the undersea cavern, which is where... <laughs> where we need to go. We are in the undersea cavern. We have stocked up on items. We've rested at the inn. We've opened the floodgates. Now we can actually proceed to the, the undersea cavern proper. Now this area is entirely missable. So if you do not get all of the items right now and, and encounter some of these enemies, you will never get the chance to do it again. So I highly recommend spending some time and, uh, and making sure you get all the items that you possibly can. This is actually a very quick dungeon if we were to go right to the end of it. Uh, but of course, I'm me, which means we're going to be gathering all the items. And the first of which is an attack ball, which is useless. Sell it. I'm not even... I really don't like the ball items um, because there's just no... There's no real reason for them. Right here, we can get a jeweled crown, uh, which is very cool. Uh, it is a headpiece that we can equip to some of the ladies in the party. 
We're actually going to go this way first. As you can see, it kind of loop de loops and pulls. Uh, and we'll go all the way around. We will get into a random encounter, which is perfect because now I can actually talk about some of the encounters that you will find here in this area of the undersea cavern. Two of which are the only missable enemies that you will find. The Flabby Troll and the Sea Piranha, neither of which are in this battle. These are two glares, the octopus guys, and a screw shell. The screw shell is uh, pretty cool. They're all water-based. Uh, the screw shell can actually, it, it has very high defense, uh, only 160 health, but it can put up a physical attack barrier, making it uh, a pretty good option for uh, farming some additions. The glares can also hit you with a very, very strong magic attack that uh, can also add bewitchment status to you, and it is very, very annoying. I would recommend going in here with body purifiers or mind purifiers, because there are a few enemies that can really ruin your day, but because we're in a party with all dragoons at the moment, you could literally just pop special or transform that character into a dragoon, and they will get rid of that status. So... It, it's not that big of a deal. And honestly, everyone is getting such high. Yeah, I got it. Everyone's getting such high SP right now anyways, that it's just, it's honestly just not that big of a deal. Also, I maxed out Dart's Madness Hero. He's getting 204 SP from it every single time he uses it, which is actually absurd. Uh, of course, he's Dragoon level five. So what does it matter? Our first random encounter beat. Let's see if we, uh, I don't think there's enough XP right now to actually have anybody level up. But we got a healing potion, which is, uh, kind of okay, I guess. We need plenty of room in our inventory to be able to loot this entire place, so it's not that big of a deal that we got a, a potion. Right here, you can find a chest. It's kind of hidden there, but that is a recovery ball. Uh, again, another item that I just don't recommend. Uh, keeping around. I recommend selling those. I mean, maybe using a recovery bell whenever you want. It's just, they're so unpredictable that odds are if you need a recovery item, you need a specific recovery item. And now we're running into the mermaid enemy, which is an enemy that you can find elsewhere as well. So it's not that big of a deal if you uh, don't encounter it here. You probably will. It's got 400 health and it is a water elemental. Uh, none of the enemies here give anything that's super great for items. Uh, the mermaids, uh, the sea piranhas, uh, do have, uh, according to some sources, have a chance of dropping a spirit potion, 8% drop chance. Uh, but I haven't actually seen those yet. Now, I mentioned in the last episode, but you can actually make this area very, very simple by having Shauna or Miru or uh, magic casters in your party and just use attack items. And almost everything in here is, except for the flabby troll, is actually weak to gushing magma, which we just picked up in burnout. So you can use those to, to actually like just dominate everything in here. Uh, we're not doing that because, like I said, I wanted to work on some additions in SP for characters that maybe haven't been in my party that often. Uh, so, so I haven't, I haven't been doing that. So we want to run up this way. The other way is where the end of this dungeon is. But we want to go this way because there's another item we can grab, which is right at the end of this path, right down here, and we can grab a recovery ball yet again another time where i'm like dude you just i just don't think it's i really just don't think it's necessary you guys let me know though do you use attack balls or uh recovery balls in this game because i just i don't see the point man i really don't so up here it'll actually bring us to this little thing here we can jump across and we can actually grab this item which is a burnout which is actually useful for us on like a attack ball the final item in the entire undersea cavern you cannot carry see what i told i told you I'm actually gonna go ahead and use that uh, that H that healing potion that we got because there's no real reason to keep it. But the item that you'll pick up is again another attack ball. But that is it for the items that we can find here in the undersea cavern. Now we are going to switch our party to the party that I think is the best party uh, that you can have for this particular fight that's coming up. So we're gonna switch Albert out for Shauna and Rose out for Miru uh, at, because they're just they're just amazing and uh, I love them so much. Now, Madness Hero is also at 99, um, which is not a big deal, but what I would recommend is switching Dart to something that does uh, like Crush Dance, right? Because the damage percent is 250 and we have the Heat Blade. So it's, it's actually better than Madness Hero, even though Madness Hero gives us 204. 
So we want to make sure that everybody is as fast as possible and has everything that they could possibly have. Uh, this fight could be very challenging if uh, if you're if you go in not prepared. Uh, but I think what we're going to do is we're actually going to equip the magical hat on Dart here. And the reason for that is because it's actually going to increase his magic, which is going to be useful for us uh, because you'll see the power that he can actually do because of the fact that he is he is the, the red-eyed dragoon. He is the fire dragoon, which is obviously strong against uh, against water. And guess what? The next two, the next boss is water. I highly recommend saving your game here as well because not only is this a difficult fight, but also uh, the enemy that we're about to face has a chance of dropping another jeweled crown. And I'm me, so I want to make sure... I'm probably going to have to do this fight a few times, but I want to make sure that we can get that item. Now this, my friends, is Prison Island, which is literally just this map in the next one, and that's it. Uh, so everything else was pretty much just the Undersea Cavern. But look at... Isn't this... Dude... I love it. I love the barnacles on the rocks. Oh, one of my favorite, one of my favorite maps. Well, look who it is. Here's the moon dagger that you wanted. I didn't kill those humans, as you said, but why did you suddenly start to say such a thing? The blood-smeared road might be the only way to lead us to the world we desire. Death gives birth to tears, and tears give birth to anger. When anger turns itself into rancor, it opens to war. It's silly that I have to repeat it, and since once is enough, I won't stop you if you want to do so, Lloyd. Anyway, he's called something like Dart. Aren't they the ones coming after you, Lloyd? It's all in my plan. <laughs> hmm. Plan, huh? Now let me tell you my plan. My plan is to get a hot prize from you. Huh. Hey! You're disturbing my moment here. You're gonna pay for this. Why? Why is Lloyd here? Is this all part of your plot? My will is with Emperor Diaz. Namely, everything was planned by the god. You are still talking about that crap? You killed Lavitz. Let us settle this score now. I have the calling to reform the world. I have no time to pay attention to little things like Lavitz. Lloyd! I cannot stand it anymore! I am the one who torched your home to the ground. I am the one who deprived your friend of his life. And I hold the moon gem and the moon dagger in my hands. You abhor me, don't you? I am heading to Milisezu. Pursue me. If you can survive. <laughs> easy, easy, wait a minute. Don't be so hasty. It was nice of him giving you an invitation, but you gotta decline it. Hmm. Because you will die now and here. Linus the Blue Sea Dragoon. What? That's right, friends. We are in a boss fat battle against the Blue Sea Dragoon, Linus, the Wingly, as well as Regal, the Blue Sea Dragon. So there really was a sea dragon here. Look at that. The second time that we are fighting a dragoon and dragon together. So Miru is going to get a turn right away. We're actually going to go ahead and use that speed up on Shauna, uh, just because Shauna does more damage than literally anybody else. You want to focus your attacks on Regal right now because he is actually, that dragon is is what's going to be dishing out the most damage. So luckily for us, we did get some gushing magmas and some burnouts. So we want to go ahead and use these just so we can do some damage to both of them at the same time. You'll notice that Linus's magic defense is actually super high. So she's going to take much less damage from that. About half, 
more than half uh, less than uh, Regal actually did. Now, this is the perfect time for Dart to transform into a Dragoon. Beautiful. Big thing here that I want to tell you guys, uh, there is a, potentially a bug that will cause your game to freeze if you turn into a Dragoon on this, on this, uh, in this battle. But yeah, we're not going to use the Red-Eyed Dragon just yet. We're going to use a final burst on Regal here. Regal, Regal, Regole. Ravioli. Watch how much damage final burst does to this dragon. Which I didn't even tell you how much health these guys have. Thirteen eighty-six out of dart, because we have that magic on him. Now the uh, the Linus that we're fighting here has three thousand HP, and her dragon Rigole or Rigole uh, has three thousand as well. This is its attack tsunami, which is going to do quite a bit of damage, especially to dart. And any time that you do decide to use a burnout, a single target burnout, it's going to do much more damage to Regole. Regol. Of course, it missed on the on Miru and Shana. All right, so we're going to go out with another Gushing Magma here. As you can see, one hit, or basically two hits from gush, uh, Gushing Magma and then the final burst was actually enough to bring Regol uh, down to, uh, to red health, which is absolutely wild. So I'm going to actually use a burnout here on Linus, even though we could play it smart and uh, actually do enough damage to just kill Regal in this attack. But I kind of want to bring Linus down just a little bit more. 238% on that one. 635 damage with that burnout done to directly to Linus. We're actually going to go ahead and use uh, Miru now to use Gushing Magma. So we'll get rid of the dragon on this turn and uh, do hopefully some pretty significant damage to Linus as well, even though her magic defense is so, so high in this fight. 332 damage to Linus. Regal has been defeated. Sean is going to go ahead right away and use a, another burnout, our last one actually in this fight. Linus still in blue health, but that's okay because we do have a mighty red-eyed dragoon sitting there ready to use final burst whenever he so chooses. 608 damage. Ah, I love this attack. She like creates a, uh, like a, a pool for us. Awesome. Does very little damage to our team. Dart, of course, is gonna use final burst. If you do this fight right, the dragon will barely ever be able to attack you. And Linus just doesn't do enough damage to make her on her own uh, a significant threat to your party. So keep that in mind uh, as you go through this. Now, we're actually out of burnouts and it is Miru's turn. So what we're going to do is uh, we're just going to use additions. Because Linus is in the red. So essentially one more attack. I could use Gushing Magma right now to end this, but instead I'm just going to attack and let Dart finish it off with another final burst. The last final burst that we're going to need in this fight. Here it is. Let's wrap up the Linus fight and let's hope that we get the Jeweled Crown. 612 damage. Linus is going down. Look at those giant bones in the background. Who does that belong to? Nice. Lloyd. 
my life. Is for you. Dragoon Spirit has left Linus. As you can see, that's why I choose that party, because they're actually there. Holy shit! <laughs> we actually got super lucky, and the Jeweled Crown dropped on our second attempt at the fight, which I uh, was not expecting, but I'm very, very happy about it. We also got 7,000 experience, the Frozen Jet item, which is 100% from Regal. The uh, Jeweled Crown being, I believe, 25% chance from Linus. Uh, 250 gold, but that 7,000 experience is going to look real nice. Everybody in our party is going to gain a level. Uh, Shauna will also gain a level 24, 24 on Dart, and Shauna 23 on Miru, and Kongol in the reserves will also gain a level. This is another fight where you potentially could have had Dart die to get more experience, but he was so useful in actually defeating them that I, he deserves it. Wait. What's this? What? This... It's Miru's Dragoon Spirit. Oh, I'm surprised that Miru was recognized. Does that mean this Dragoon Spirit chose me? It means... Am I one of the Dragoons? Acquired the Blue Sea Dragoon Spirit. I'm a Dragoon too! That's right, everyone! Miru! Has joined the ranks. Officially, everybody in our party is now a Dragoon. Dragoon spirits attract each other, and dragoons gather as the dragon spirit desires, as so as fate leads. Are we drawn to each other like that? Is that what you're saying? Hmm. It's just folklore. You are going to pursue Lloyd, aren't you? Unfortunately, we have to go meet King Zor to tell him we couldn't bring the moon dagger back. Aren't you hurt? No. Thanks to you, Dart. Miru the dancer is now a dragoon. Hi, everyone. Look at me. I'm Miru. The dragoon spirit of the blue sea dragon. Which is actually funny because the original Blue Sea Dragoon was a like a 15-year-old uh, human mermaid hybrid uh, that was bullied her entire life and hated uh, and had a really, really rough life. And now Miru is, interestingly enough, the next inheritor of the Blue Sea Dragoon spirit. Hey guys, don't you ignore me like that. Hey, wait for me. I'm a dragoon now. So we now uh, this is it for the prison islands. Uh, once you leave this area, you will never be able to come back here. So it is very, very important that, like I said, that you get all those items, that you do everything you possibly can, uh, fight the enemies that you want to fight, all that jazz. There's nothing super special. We got the jeweled crown, so we're already looking pretty, pretty good in that in that regard. But I just thought I would point that out. We do have the chance. We have to run out of the undersea cavern now. So we do have time to get anything 
that you might have missed before the actual fight. And I'm going to save because I got lucky enough to get that on the second attempt. That was awesome. Also, uh, I just want to point out, look at our Dragoon Spirits there in the lower left-hand corner. We have all of them, my friends. Although, what's weird is it looks like there's actually enough room for one more between them and where it says Stardust. Interesting. Anyways, uh, that is it for the Undersea Cavern. I'm going to uh, get into a fight with some of the enemies that you guys haven't seen yet. You've seen the Sea Piranha in a previous video, uh, in the previous episode, but you have not seen a Flabby Troll yet, so I I'd like to show those on screen just for completion's sake. Hopefully, this is it. Ah, look at that, man. Guys, I'm getting all the luck. Of course, that in random encounter has the Flabby Troll, which is the only other, uh, and it's an earth elemental, the only enemy in this entire place that isn't water elemental. So I thought I would just point that out. Uh, and we'll go ahead and just target the, um, oh my God, I messed up. I forgot I'm doing Crush Dance. I thought I was doing Madness Hero. Uh, <laughs> so the Flabby Troll uh, being an earth elemental means that it is weak to wind. Uh, oh, that is, Pellet is earth. Um, it is it is weak to wind, so we'll go ahead and we'll actually just use uh, Shauna here on the Flabby Troll. Miru now, though, that means that Miru can now get SP in battle, which of course means that we're going to be using her a lot more frequently than we have been in the past. In fact, guys, I'm very happy to say, holy shit, that was a lot of damage. I am very, very happy to say that this is the team I will be using throughout the game. Uh, except for when a story beat happens uh, and, and essentially I want to have my party be what makes the most sense in that particular situation. Uh, so, so yeah. So anyways, Beaver and Shauna though are going to be the party that we beat the game with. That's my, that's my party. Best party in the game, man. Fight me. And we got the Night Shield from that encounter. Oh, yeah. And Albert leveled up to level 23. Of course, the Night Shield isn't that big of a deal because we uh, we got one in our first battle with Frugal way back in the day. You could buy them from Bale. I believe you can even buy them in Flets. Uh, they're not like rare or anything, but it's cool to get one from a from a random encounter, right? That's more gold than, than you would normally get. So we're done here. We can actually head. Uh, there's I'm, I'm actually curious. There might be some dialogue over in the village of Lydiera now that we've defeated the sea dragon. Uh, let's find out. There is dialogue. We heard the roar of the sea dragon from Prison Island. Don't tell me you folks defeated it. Oh, but we did, Mr. Mayor. What, 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 what? You folks are in the new legend of Elisa Bay. We'll pass down your story from generation to generation. Nice. You are the folks who defeated the sea dragon, aren't you? We are. They're, these guys are much more talkative now. I heard the roar of the sea dragon as it said its last breath. The sea is ours again. Now I'm going to split my gut and go fish. Split my gut. Wow, I haven't heard of that in a long time. That's pretty much the dialogue that we can get in Lydiera, but, uh, you know, I thought it was cute to show you guys. Wait, wait, you guys have to see. I feel uneasy and go outside, right? Nothing has changed, but I feel something is wrong with the sea. I'm the wife of a fisherman, you know. I can feel those little differences without even trying. It's been 40 years since I became the wife of my hubby. I guess it's 40 years of experience as the wife of a fisherman. Well, that's another story. Anyway, and I go outside because I feel something wrong with the sea. Then as expected, I hear this an eerie roar coming from the direction of Prison Island. I recognize it immediately. It's the sound of you folks defeating the sea dragon. You know, I was living in a village between the mountains before I came to this village for my marriage. I can feel those little differences without even trying. I spent 20 years of my 60-year life in there, you know? It reminds me that I haven't told you how I met my hubby yet. It was anyways back in the city of Fueno. Oh, I didn't know he hiccuped. That was gross. The dragon is dead, but it won't bring back my house or my ship. The, my house, my ship. It's really a pity. Yeah, that that guy is the way he is. Yeah, agreed. Poor, poor fella. Uh, you can talk to everybody if you so choose. They're not really going to say anything too much, except for the uh, the fact that they it's been a half uh, it's been a half a year since we've seen such a tourist filled Fueno, which is pretty cool. Look, look, lots of ants are attacking a praying mantis together. That's like us defeating a dragon. We're also going to go ahead and check on our friends here and see what's see what's going on with Pete and Pete's ma. See how they're feeling. Dart, my ma has gotten much better. Thanks to you, I got my strength back. 
My boy is crazy about you. He wants to go on journeys with many beautiful women like you, Dart. Ma, don't tell him about it! Pete, but it's hard work. What? How? It's because of... Sometimes it's scary. Sometimes it's too noisy. Jealousy? Jealousy. I don't mean it at all, but the circumstances were just lucky. Dart, watch your back. What? Ch Chana, uh, you didn't hear me say, what is this lucky? I wonder if something happened when you were alone with Rose. No, 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 I was unconscious. It looks hard to be with women. I'm gonna be a chef, Ma. That's not bad either. <laughs> oh my God, I love that little scene so much. It's so cute. Uh, Dart, what do you mean you are having a hard time when you have lots of pretty girls around you? And then you can actually, you can choose, so you can choose different reasons. Sometimes it's scary, so Rose comes out. Sometimes it's scary. Well, I have some girl in mind, and when I'm with her all the time, I feel a very cold gaze on my back. It's like a, a gaze that chills my spine. Dart, watch your back. What? R rose I think it's just your imagination, isn't it? Am I wrong? Yeah, yeah, you're right. It looks hard to be with women. I'll be a fisherman, Ma. That's not bad either. Okay, okay, last one, last one, last one. This is important, okay? This is important. All right, so we'll choose. Because sometimes it's too noisy, which of course Miru comes out. One woman is okay, but when you have that kind of noisy girl, I can't even get a good night's sleep. Dart, watch your back. What? Miru. Are you talking about me? Ah! <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I'll be a carpenter, Ma. That's not bad either. <laughs> I had to show those because, like, you you know, man, you you guys, you know, you you you're picking up what I'm putting down, right, Ellis? 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 Yeah. Anyways, uh, that's pretty much all of the stuff we can see here. So we just want to head back to the uh, the ship. Head back to the Queen Fury. Maybe they have finished uh, with the engine room now and we can actually like see what's going on. We are fastly approaching the end of disc two, by the way. Dart, I've heard about you. You successfully defeated the monster on the prison island and the female bandit. What's wrong? You have a long face. We're ready to go back to Fletz and Triumph. We couldn't get the Moon Dagger back. <laughs> I like the ocean. Let yourself flow in the waves and winds. The problems of this world become not a problem at all. Here is an idea, Dart. Why don't you come with me on the ocean? Dart, you would make a good sailor, or even a great man of the sea. Hmm. A man of the sea. Not bad. What are you talking about? We have to pursue Lloyd now. Yeah, we have something we have to take care of. I understand, but it's a shame. However, I'm moved that you considered being a man of the sea. It's small, but it's my farewell gift to you. Take this. And Commodore Pooler will actually give us a hundred golds for saying we would become a man of the sea. Dart, as soon as you are ready, just come aboard. Meet you on the boat! That is uh, just a little scene there. Be ready for departure! I just, listen, I just think that's a cute little, a cute little scene. You tell him that you want to do that and he'll, and he'll, uh, you know, it's nice. It's nice. And then we can talk to Kayla when we're ready to go. And yes, we are ready to leave. Let's go. Casting off. Getting ready to cast off! Oh, Kayla. You loud, girl. We, right now, actually have control of the Queen Fury, and if we press square, if you want to go back to the world map, talk to me, Commodore Pooler. You got it? And we can actually run around uh, the Queen Fury right now. We can go, we can go talk to people. We can do, we can do all of the, all of that, all of that jazz. Uh, but what we're going to do now is, uh, do you want to sail this boat as practice for becoming a man of the sea? Oops, I meant to say yes. Yes, replace the sailor, but if you're not good, he'll quickly take over for you. 
Uh, okay. Isn't that cool? Dark gets to actually... So this is one of the first times that we actually get like a vehicle that we can use on the world map. It doesn't actually allow you to explore the sea, but you do have this like area you can use. And there are random encounters that you can get into while you are at sea. One of which is going to be very important uh, and is a very tremendous way of getting experience, uh, but that isn't quite yet. Anyways, that's going to be it for this episode. Next, in the next one, we will actually go right to, to Denau, the Flower City. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the defeats of Linus and Regal, and of course, the acquisition of the Blue Sea Dragoon Spirit for Miru. I'm so excited. Uh, we, things are coming together. And uh, in the next episode, we are actually going to wrap up Disc 2 and move on to Disc 3, which is very, very exciting. Thank you so much for watching, especially, again, thank you so much to those watching the premieres every Monday, Wednesday, Friday at 2 p.m. Eastern. Really, really appreciate it. I hope you guys are enjoying the series. Uh, and if you want to come say hi, you can find me over on twitch.tv slash online every Thursday to Saturday at 9 a.m. Eastern. Thank you for watching, and remember, never give up, never surrender to the Blue Sea Dragon.